every person I spoke to was like, I was born here, this is my home. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you got a passport then? No, I haven't. I, I, would, I, I would like to. Yeah. I did apply for the Bobsleigh, Bohemian Bobsleigh team once. Yeah. They told me that I, I would have to qualify and have a Bohemian passport on. Oh, it was basically just me on a little snowboard thing going down a tiny hill in Carlisle in the snow. So I sent the, I sent the video to the, oh, yeah. well, I sent a video to the Olympic chairman of the Bahamas. Who... <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of Podcast Chat. We've got a very, very special guest today who made me extremely nervous. <laughs> Andrew, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we've had each other on social media for a while, haven't we? A couple of years. Yes. When I went back with the messages. From I, was, from I was trying to be a social media expert. <laughs> I, still, so I, I, I was finding all these people. <laughs> yeah. um, sort of died down a little bit. And then he messaged me last week, I think it was, wasn't it? Yes reaching out asking for coming to we can be cb to help out with some marketing stuff yeah and here we are and here we are yeah what, what made you reach out i'm, I'm intrigued just through the instagram because i know that you know you've been popular and you just recently won the, the carl elite awards and mm. i do do follow you and i do see you every now and again in different places i think oh could, you know he's, he's a good he's a good lad <laughs> so i thought just with the the start of the bright stars business project i thought you'd be an ideal person to maybe come out and share your your knowledge with the the children mm -hmm. about how to set up a business and how to market the products and things so and luckily you, you, you were persuaded by a video so <laughs> that, that was the thing i was saying to you before and i said to the kids i was like i was actually quite nervous because I'm used to talking about talking to like business owners and adults about whatever, and then coming and speaking to like 10, 11 year olds, I was thinking, I think, think I'm boring, are they going to find it interesting? Yeah, it's definitely scary. It's, it's definitely a skill that's acquired over, over time. But as I said to you, I think you're comfortable speaking to adults, and that's, that, that's the scary part for, for me. I'm, I'm quite, I can teach in front of children and speak, but uh, all the way around, it's, yeah, I do lose my words and yeah. I'm confident of it, mm. but, yeah. Um, so then, I haven't even prepped you, prepped you about 10 seconds before we start. Yeah. So what we normally do is we'll do three facts about yourself, then we'll talk about what you were like growing up, and then talk about what we're doing now, and then at the end, like, greatest strength, greatest weakness. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. I've been you on the spot, I literally on the spot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, three facts. We kind of okay. Well, okay. I'm head teacher at uh, Wigan BCB Primary School. I've been head here this is my sixth year. Before that, I was uh, teacher and deputy head at another school in West Cumbria. Shout out to Uh So, did my degree here and stayed. Met my future wife and we've settled in Carlisle. Uh, we have two boys. Uh, I've gone on too well now. Uh, another uh, fact uh, is... Uh, what's your podcast? Is your yeah, no, I, another fact. <laughs> no, I did well go on. Sorry. And uh, I'm right. <laughs> no, it's, it's no <laughs> And it was funny because when I was doing a bit of a Q&A, wasn't it? One of the boys had the microphone and he was like, so how much money do you earn? <laughs> and then at the end, the Andrew was like, oh, it was funny. I was like, that's my son. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, like, that's yeah, my son. With, with no fault, with no fault here <laughs> at all. I rate that. So I'm a massive Spurs fan been since primary school. I had much to celebrate in my time as a Spurs fan. Maybe 1991 was the last big trophy. 2019 was the Champions League run, but that was the most exciting that's been. We're getting better under Ange, but... Um, I've been quite embarrassed and really annoyed at home. I've been a right grump. Is it four games? Or have you lost four, yeah, four on the shot. I don't think it was... Oh, we have scored, but I've uh, shipped a lot of goals. That's the thing, though. I feel like if you'd even picked up a win and a draw, you're in pole position, really. Pole I did position. think we'd get results against... You could, well, poles and really, but we just mm. haven't turned up. Um, Are you going to get rid of Rich Allison, or...? That's the... That's the... That's the we take chat. Yeah, no, it's... I like him as a person. He's he's done okay for us this season. Um, yeah, exactly. but I think we need a more of a an out and out striker. And he's gonna like an Ollie Watkins or something. Yeah, because for Charleston, um, isn't an out and out striker. He's, he's better like slightly from the left. Then obviously, Son plays from the left. Yeah, I think he? probably Sonny maybe up front. Mm -hmm. More so to 
Because he's, he, he's probably the only world class player now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's funny, Harry Kane now, isn't it? <laughs> Harry, the, Harry, the crust of Harry Kane. What was it? Bayern has won the league every year since 2012. And then Harry yeah. Kane joins the club, nothing. That is very strange. I saw a tweet earlier and it was saying, like, Harry Kane goes to Bayern and then Bayern Leverkusen won the league for the time, but then Dortmund to go with the Champions Yeah. <laughs> he can take care of his Spurs, but not the, the Spurs are okay. <laughs> That's really shocking. And then the third one? I was born in the Bahamas. That's my favourite fact. Uh, conceived in Belfast. Uh, but you you go to work in Mark? So, yeah, but born in, in NASA in the Bahamas. My dad got a job in the bank over there for a couple of years. Mm. And we went, I took my family back last summer for a, a few days in Bahamas. So I was like, I'm home. Yeah. Uh, every person I spoke to was like, I was born here. This is my home. <laughs> so, have you got a passport? Then? No, I haven't. I, I would. I, I would like to. Yeah, I did apply for the bobsleigh, Bohemian bobsleigh team once. Yeah, they told me that I, I would have to qualify and have a Bohemian passport. Oh, oh, oh. It was basically just me on a little snowboard thing going down a tiny hill in Carlisle in the snow. So I sent the, I sent the video to the, oh, yeah. well, I sent a video to the Olympic chairman of the Bahamas who he did reply, which is nice, but I think he yeah pretty, declined. Pretty, pretty much yeah probably declined. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. I do apply for Spurs jobs every now and again. But... <laughs> the thing is after this season you're like okay. <laughs> exactly. no, because like I said you just literally then I was born American, I've got an American passport. Yeah. But I think if I wanted to move over there I'd have to renew at the embassy. Mm. and then do it because my dad had a job over there my brother was born in Carlisle so it's not too yeah. crazy but it's cool because what's the population of Bahamas in? Oh, ask him not, really. not, not, not that much I've never been to be fair it's, it's lovely like, lovely yeah. Yes. yeah nice and chill out yeah mm. so, what, so obviously we were at school and I've been speaking to 10 11 year olds what were you like when you were 10 11? very shy very quiet mm. that was all the way through school really into secondary school I wouldn't mm. I've said boo to a ghost really I was mm. quite reserved no, I wasn't a loner. I had friends, but uh, mm. just in class, I was just dead shy and mm. didn't want to speak for fear of getting things mm. wrong. So now as a, mm. I've managed to, you know, get a career in teaching. It's all about teaching the children and, you know, ask questions. Mm. And don't be fearful. And mm. that's the most important thing. They've got to be out, you know, try and be a bit more outgoing and not be fearful mm. of things. You know, we've got SATS coming up next week, which is really sad. I don't agree with them. Mm. Controversial, maybe, but and the you know, some of the six, year, year sixes are really nervous and anxious, and it's oh. it's not the most important. It's not going to define their future. And I, no. um, I think you said you know to them before you know qualifications okay they count for some things, but it doesn't define mm. where you go in life. And I think that's important for ch young children to to know that you know they can aspire to be anything. Mm. And these these exams don't stop you from doing what you want to achieve yeah. if you've got the ambition and drive to do it yeah exactly because i remember when i was doing my sats so I'd, I'd like to think that i was relatively bright but i uh, school didn't really interest me like the mm. academic side i was like good at maths i was not yeah. actually good at maths mm. so i think you got like a five i don't know yeah, yeah it's just, it's uh it's just expected you're expected or you're you're not <laughs> uh, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, you could be working at greater depth if you're really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, just when I did it, it was like, was it five, four, three? And five, yeah, five, five, five something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was level six as well. Oh, it was a six? No. I don't remember, but yeah, so I think I got like a five in a maths and a four in English and a four in the science. Yeah. And then mum and dad were like, no, blah, blah, blah. So then they sent me to like the school I didn't want to go to. Mm. Because, yeah, I don't know. That was, that was the first eldest kid about younger brother. And then they sent me to like private school, whatever. And then even though like my dad paid for the school, a lot of the kids, like and everyone paid for school, a lot of the kids didn't get many GCSEs hmm. and neither haven't, I don't know, got a career that you'd expect from to go to private school or if you're into the family business, which is fair enough. Yeah. And it's, that's, that's what I mean. It's like, if you've got, I feel like if you've got, this, this, this age doesn't matter. I think like, so you just have to enjoy, like I was saying to them, you love what you're doing. Like I say, I love what I'm doing. So it doesn't be like a job yeah. at all. I wake yeah. every day excited. Hmm. As long as you do something you enjoy, I feel like it doesn't make a difference. And then just try loads of things that like you're saying. Don't be scared to be bad at something or be wrong because I'm corporate with it now. I won't try that many new things unless I know I can be good at it. Mm. But yeah, like... Yeah, yeah I, follow, I follow some other people on social media and the main message is, you know, take a risk. It's not about mm. having money behind you necessarily. It's about 
taking that risk and getting that reward mm, yeah. as a result of that was a, was a main message, I think. From, yeah. Uh, just being, mm. just go and do it. If it's something that, as you say, passionate about, enjoy doing, go and try it. Yeah, and that's the thing that some people say to me uh, on the bit of tangent here, but say, oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. And it's like, yeah, if you want to have a not normal life or something, you got to take a bit of a risk. But if you just do the same thing you're doing over and over again, you're gonna have the same. You're gonna have the same thing over and over again. And I was lucky in the fact that mum and dad let me come home in COVID and mm. stuff and gave me the opportunity to grow the business again. I'm very lucky and fortunate for that. Not everyone's in that situation, isn't it? And it's, yeah. like I was saying to you earlier, people have got families. It's a massive risk, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I just have to look after myself as long as I'm fine. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah, that, yeah, that's, Whereas, like, it's all right for me me saying this, mm. but a lot of people have got different things to consider. But yeah, it's calculated, isn't it? That's it is. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Mm. I, enjoy, I do love teaching. I love mm. education and mm. helping people along the way. And yeah. It's uh, rewarding. It is very rewarding. Mm. So, so, what yeah. did you enjoy them when you were at school? Then, when you were like 10, 11, primary school? Uh, sport, maths. I was good at maths, yeah. and I've always had a passion for geography yeah. really I've, I did a geography degree with my teaching and then tra- travelling has been we always went on holidays as, as a child and that's you know, something that we do as a family now is mm-hmm. try and go to new places if we if we can and I think that will rub off on certainly the youngest I think he'll when he leaves school I think he'll just go travelling yeah, uh, nice, whereas the, the eldest Jackson is a bit more money oriented <laughs> yeah. so it's, mm. it's mad that, that kids like you say the vocal people but they can be so different as yeah. they are yeah I wonder why, why is that you know? I don't know I don't know it's, <laughs> yeah. it's just different interests maybe mm. that they've acquired over mm. time at school or at home um, so what's it like to be I'd love to be a dad in like a few years brilliant yeah. Nothing prepares you for it, so you know, the it's is the best mm. journey we, uh, ever. Stressful. Were you ready? Can you say? <laughs> re- um, I think we, no, I think we were, yeah, we were ready. Um, yeah. still shocked to assist them for the first weeks, few weeks, and months, but then, yeah, so my uh, kid, you know, the kids, it's like <laughs> you know, the first child, you know, gets all the clean, you know, make sure everything's sterilized, to the, mm-hmm. and the second child comes in. Fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. He's, he's real. <laughs> uh, but no, no, it's 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 it, it is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Two's yeah. enough for us. So. Yeah. Uh, so I think I'll just have two. Uh, I think three would be too many. It's like one pair for each one. Yeah. For it gets expensive. Yeah, brother has six. So it's uh, six. yeah. It's crazy. So he's been busy. Very busy. What do you want to be? What do you want to do when you're growing up? Because like for me, I just want to be football. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, footballer was, would always be yeah. in there. And then my dad was a bank manager, and mm. sort of I think he tried to sort of pass that on to me a bit. And I did think about it. My mum was a bit of was taught adults who hadn't got any GCSEs or A levels at school, so like adult education. That was quite. Interestingly, I did a week placement through school at my local primary school back in Belfast. I really enjoyed it and thought like that's what I want to do. Luckily, I got enough A levels to it's a choice of Carlisle or Bristol. Hmm. Bristol was a bit. I felt a bit far from home. I believe I know I could have just got a plane, but I didn't think of that at the time because <laughs> we got the boat over. I had my interview in Carlisle, and then we drove down to Bristol for another interview. I thought, oh, this is miles. Yeah, it's easy just to fly yeah, Bristol exactly. out, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I went. I opted for for Carlisle, which we were the first intake mm. to Carlisle in 1998, and did a four-year degree. And yeah, it was mm. been here ever since. Mm. What do you think? I haven't personal. It was very anti-student. We had to be careful where you go and what you say. If you said you were a student in the middle of time, that's it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't a great. It wasn't a great reaction. To be fair, it did cause some arguments and fights. Not as old as me. Yeah. But no, it's 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 improved. I think mm-hmm. over the last certainly 20, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, for us, it seems a lot more welcoming. Not as insular. Or but yeah, it's. Yeah. I know you see things on in papers saying the Carlisle's an awful place to. To live, but the, bad, uh, yeah. it's 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 nice, and obviously you got the lakes and things around you as well. So it's it's got lots to offer. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's, yeah. It feels safe. Yeah, yeah. 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 So then, when you were at uni, then what what did you want to? What career were you thinking of taking? Then? Well, it was a teaching degree, so okay. it was, that was geography. I did yeah. so geography was the main part of it, and then you did your teaching on top of it. So I've got a job. I've got a geography degree in there. 
and a teaching degree Perfect. alongside that. So I could go into just something to do with geography. Mm. Um, but teaching was what I wanted to do. Mm. Um, it, was, it was hard, um, did lots of placements, uh, got my degree and um, yeah, mm. taught still for 15 years. Mm. And, <laughs> 15 years. Yeah, and yes, got the job here. Well, there's one of my friends from school, he's a teacher, a PE teacher. He went to Plymouth, I think, you know, nice. to do the PGC. And then he just got a job in the school that went to Six Hearts, Room House Six Farm. Yeah. And he, he's there now. He says it's like some of the kids are obviously in that area. It's, it's getting get harder every, yeah. every year. I, I think COVID has had an impact on that as well. Mm. Children, young children haven't been able to go to their play groups or things like that where they mm. interact with other children or, you know, do their crawling or, you know, they're, they're stuck in front of iPads a lot, a lot mm. more than maybe what they, they should mm. be. And things that does have an impact on their attention and their behaviour and their learning yeah. when they start yeah. school. Mm. So what was that first job like then, Shilla? What was it called? That? That, was, that was scary. They, they, <laughs> they were a hard... A hard bunch, there's a lot of stories. I don't know. <laughs> if you don't want it to go hard, yeah. oh, we can cut it out anyway. There is, yeah, no, we have, we have parties on tables, which I think, you know, the, 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 the children just stood on tables. That was in the like, curriculum. I was just like, <laughs> it wasn't my idea. I was like, can you just sit down, please? <laughs> no, that, that was good. So, uh, I tried to split up a, so the secondary school was next door. So it was, mm. I think it was a, a fight or something. Oh, they took the ball. Yeah. So me being the enthusiastic teacher, I thought, right, I'm going to go and get that ball. I ended up at the bottom of a pylon. That was fun. Yeah. So you know, the first couple of years are, are hard, mm -hmm. a lot of learning. But if, if you've got good supportive colleagues, it's good. But it's certainly a first two years are certainly an eye opener. And if you're still going after two years, then yeah, all right, yeah. you're okay. I think. Was it what you expected then? Or? Yeah, no, it was, you know, I knew about how hard it would be in terms of the, you know, you, I think a lot of people see teachers as, you know, nine till half eight till three, and then you're, you're home. You don't have your week, you have your weekends free and you have all these lovely holidays. And don't get me wrong, the holidays are, are nice, but a lot of those are spent either in school or doing work prepping for the next term. At weekends, some days I didn't have any Sundays free, really, it was just work mm. really um i must say covid did sort of stop me in my tracks with that so if it's covid i've made more time for family mm. i think that's been important so the, mm. if there's one thing out, good out of what's come out of covid i think it's oh, that understanding of which is more important having you know, the work or their family i think no, definitely. Uh, the family side of things is essential yeah because that's what i would want when i have a family is that i don't have to be Tired about so much or working so much, so I can have more of a balance because yeah. see at the moment I'm just trying to work as hard as I can and make as much money as I can to provide for my future family in the way that I want to. Yeah. And I know now that it would be hard to balance it. And that's what I wouldn't want because I'd want to be there for my kids as much as possible. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. You know, the football's raining and all that kind of thing. I'd love to like manage my kids' football team. I just love that. That's well, I'll do that as well. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I'll do that when I'm under, under 11. Still still. Junior yeah. Blackbirds so under 11. So we've got a football tournament tomorrow so, uh, at Warwick Bridge. So. Oh, the Warwick Wanderers. The Warwick Wanderers, yeah. Because that's, so I played for Carl United quite for quite a lot of my time, but when I was like nine and then when I was like 15, 16, I played Perth Warwick Wanderers and that was my team, yeah. Sort of down the gate. Yeah. 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 That tournament was so good. Great club. Warrior Wanderers. Obviously, my eldest plays for Warrior Wanderers. Oh, uh, under 14s going to under 15s. Uh, oh, so. It always used to be like a nice sunny weekend that weekend. It is. I was supposed to be, yeah. I think we'll get the same again yeah. uh, this weekend. So uh, that, was, that was the best day of playing for yeah. the tournaments. Tournaments are good. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, you work, worked your way through to left and deputy head. So. Deputy head, yeah. And then I'd applied for a job. Head teacher's job in another school. I didn't get that. And then um, the head teacher from here was got a job later on in the school year. So they didn't have time to sort of advertise. But the local authority had seen me at the previous interview and phoned and asked if I would take the post up as temporary uh, head teacher here, which I said yes to. And then got the job permanently. And that's it. Got off stead the week after. No. So, so I was in the October of my, so the second month 
off stick. Yeah, got the full oh, report. I was like, thanks for letting me settle in. <laughs> and then because we're a church school, we get inspected every four or five years in that as well. And we got that in the April. In the April. It's it's the first so, so, it's, <laughs> yeah. Intense, yeah. It's very intense. But it, no, really good, really enjoyable. I love being ahead. I think we do a lot of for our children here, which I'm really proud of. I said to you about the amount of sport we do. We do a lot of sport. We do a lot of mental health work and, mm. as well and just getting outdoors and we've got forest school and I think that's it's not all about curriculum mm. it's we try and enhance that through mm. the sport and through the forest and obviously through the business stuff that we're doing yeah. doing now no it sounds like you did a good job from the little that we spoke about it and before we go into that stuff what was then COVID like for you for the kids because like the only thing I can relate understand this my brother was at Liverpool Uni mm. when it was COVID and I think he was in his second year so he'd had like one and a half years and in the last one and a half years it was like no contact time he was just in his flat or mm. and, and that kind of thing it was hard which I think for him he missed out on a lot of the socialising aspects and stuff so especially like kids just growing up yeah the impact on children has been really significant I include my own children mm. in that so as a teacher so I'm also a class teacher as well, twice a week, doing the online lessons whilst also trying to support your own children doing their schoolwork. It was really, really hard, but just for the children in general, doing lessons at home, not being able to see their friends, it was quite an emotional time. They, f they find it really difficult. I think the parents find it difficult to think, sort of not force that on them, but to try and get them to do work and I did as a parent yeah so we, we did as best as we could with the online teaching but there's only so much of that you could really do and get the children to access the big love of it was on, on all the parents and mm -hmm. I think that was caused a lot of stress in households as it did mine as, yeah. yeah and then coming back to school those children the children still had all those anxieties and nerves and felt different about school find school a lot harder than what they might have done pre-covid or without covid happening mm -hmm. so yeah so it wasn't wasn't a great time we were open then we weren't open and, be hard. Um, mm -hmm. we had a hub so the Silth was a hub school so i went there uh, once or twice a week to cover we all took the head teachers in the area took it in turns to sort of cover different hubs there was a week some hub in the Silth hub during covid and then when we opened here it was just for certain children and they had to be spaced out and making sure that they, they had work and stuff. It was, it was, it was tough. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, even like you and adults, like say you and my brother, I can see how you missed out on that, never mind like when you're at primary school and you just finally see, aren't you? It's like he even could be as a person, like who you are as a person, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's when we first came back properly. I think we, we spent that first autumn term just getting to know each other again, mm -hmm. feeling relaxed, having those well-being days out in the forest or we went to the beach um, and just played. And, you know, it wasn't about the curriculum. It was just trying to make sure everyone was sort of back feeling as happy and content as they, they could. And, you know, I think the majority are, but, you know, those, those stresses and strains of COVID have certainly had an impact and mm -hmm. left a bit of a scar on some of the children and, and, and the parents. Yeah, I even noticed when I was leaving the classroom, how like loud and happy they were with each other. Yeah. That was obviously like a stranger coming in and stuff. And you can see like, we was chatting with each other and stuff like that. It's just nice to see, isn't it? Yeah. Like friends and stuff. Um, and you mentioned about how you probably do too much sport. <laughs> I don't, well, I mean, I, I, I don't think you can do too much no, sport. No. But in, in terms of the whole curriculum, there's yeah. so much to, to fit in, you know, when, when I say, oh, we've got a cricket coach on Monday and Thursday this yeah. week, and uh, somebody else is coming in, yeah. it's like, where do we want me to fit, yeah. fit in anything else? But oh, I think the outdoors. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's my favourite part of yeah. like primary school, is playing football. Well, football is the main thing, to be fair. Yeah. So playing against other schools as well in the football, I used to love that. And like you say, tennis, I used to love tennis. It's like, I don't know, it's competitive, but it's not competitive. And they learn that thing, it don't is. they? And you build teamwork. And yeah. that's like the skills that I feel like you learn as a kid that you don't feel like you're actually learning, but it sounds like you're as an adult. It does, so, yeah. You don't have to really necessarily enjoy sport to get something mm -hmm. from it. I don't think so there's that team, team element. 
and also mm. you're having targets for yourself and goals for yourself. It's all part of, of life. Uh, it's not just in, in sport. So not everyone is sporty, but they can mm. learn a lot yeah. from being outdoors and being active. Yeah. Um, I mean, like for me, it would be reflecting on when I was younger. It's like, who's a leader? Who's like that yeah. person who just shows them as consistent, if there's nothing great, or who's like a weak link or whatever, and how can you accommodate or help them and that kind of thing, isn't it? It's just understanding people and how you can help each other work towards the same like goal. Absolutely, and, and you know, play times, it's mostly, you can go and get some play equipment to, to play, like it's mainly sport equipment, but recently we've just bought a range of outdoor event stuff, so there's barrels, there's crates, there's planks, tires and i just put them out and said you know and the, the children have just gone there they've created all these imaginative stuff for them yeah. through their imaginative play and it's it's just nice to see so again that's building those leadership skills and working together to you know build something or make something that you know, we had boats made and <laughs> they were sat in the barrels and going going, going, going to you know a different continent or whatever mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's it's really nice to see it's amazing that, like at that age your imagination does just run wild isn't it and then when you get older yeah, the, the stuff you're using, you just think, okay, you know, no, yeah, completely, you know, it's completely, yeah, yeah. this is how it is, it is what it is, and that's like yeah. it, isn't yeah. it? It's crazy. But I think the main thing we want to talk about, isn't it, is the business side of things, which I said to you before we even did the talk, that I wish I had something like this when I was a kid, not like because of the entrepreneurial, but just to like hone your skills and learn different things and like how money actually works. Or yeah, work. I think so. The, the, how did it come about? Yeah, yeah. so the Bright Stars, I and mean, it's been going for a number of years, but it's not something I've ever done. I think the school has done it before before my time. Uh, I've done quite, done quite well. And we got asked just before Easter, there was a space left. Orion would like to sponsor you. Do you want to give it a go? So, yeah, sounds great. So I thought five, year five and six be a good group to do it with, take the mind off things that are coming up, such as Sats. And we put it to them and, you know, we, we discussed what sort of the theme would be for our business. And we, we all agreed well-being and mental health, because as I said, we've done a lot of that in school. And then we thought about a name, right? Well-beings, Wigan B. Wigan B on well-being, so wow. And then we thought, oh, that's, I sort of, I like uh, Roy Lichtenstein art, he's like a pop artist. And it's like, well, it's, our design could be a little bit like that. So Polly, who comes and helps us as well, she sort of created the, the logo for it. And that was our star base. And then we obviously had to think about the product. But yeah, <laughs> so it, 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 quite simple, really. So we, we they, they thought about the bookmarks, which are quite cool. They, they sit in the corner of your, your book rather than your traditional ones. And they wanted to do, because it was mental health, they wanted to put a an affirmation on the back uh, so that when the person who's reading a book opens the book can they, they feel a, a need of a, a pick-me-up. You know, this one says, every day is a new day to be positive. Uh, just that reminder that, you know, there's plenty of things to be positive, positive about, even, you know, even if you're feeling a bit down or low, you know, you know just that little reminder. Yeah, uh, cool. So the children have had me at those. We've got real experts in the folding. So uh -huh. we thought, rather than everyone just making one would have sort of a production line so we've got folders and then we've got uh, people who draw on people who are cutting out the shapes and gluing bits on and um, people who are doing the affirmation so it's really quite that teamwork element uh, mm -hmm. has come through um really well and we're hoping to obviously sell as many as we can to make as much profit as we can but i think i did a post i think the day on social media i said it before and it was about like being a specialist in your thing. So like this for, for the kids, it's like they are the best at folding or they are the best at drawing and then you have a better product. And yeah. I think I said too, when I, uh, left it, but when I first started out, me and my business partner at the time, we tried to do everything ourselves. So we were like generally okay. So like we just try and do this all ourselves and like my folding might be good, but my drawing might be rubbish. Or yeah. And then the product is average. Yeah, they, they picked up that. Quite quickly, the, mm. the suggestion quite quickly came. <laughs> I think we should split into our skill sets, mm. and, and that was that was the way it went. So we've made a lot yeah. of bookmarks. So hopefully we can sell them over the next few weeks. So it's an eight-week project, mm. Adam. So we've, we're into the third week now. So we've got a good few weeks left. Obviously, in half term will affect things a little bit, but hopefully we can sell make loads of money. If we can, yeah. And we we also thought about worry dolls. So previously. I think it was just after COVID that I 
gave every child a little worry doll, a little pouch and a little prayer. And there was a little heart in there just to sort of make them feel a bit good about themselves, especially with all these anxieties and things that they've they had. So they wanted to make worry dolls. So we just used, you know, they've used a, a lollipop stick and they've designed everything and made everything themselves. And again, it's a little message on the back to help them, you know, if they need to speak to the worry dolls, take those worries away. And that's that's mm. that's that's the message. And again, it's all about positive mental health and, and, and well-being. Mm. And with the logo on as well. Worries. I'm your little worry doll. Keep me by your side. Tell me all your worries in me you can confide yeah because I think like when you messaged me I was thinking oh I didn't, didn't know what to expect you know what I mean when you speak to the kids they are also switched off yeah they're like 10 and 11 year olds mm-hmm. they're yeah. taken aback and asking loads of questions and they'd like know what they're doing don't they yeah they're a good they're a good group and you know we've had formal interviews for different positions in the in the business so we've got project manager vice project manager we've got somebody in charge of production somebody in charge of finance and mm. uh, hr sales as well so uh, yeah and customer relations uh, so we had smooth, we made smoothies today and sold those in school for the children and staff yeah. so they Customer relations was going around. Do you like your smoothies? You know, what to do? <laughs> yeah. like that one. So we know if, if we do it again, which we will now because it was successful. It was, yeah. uh, which ones are good or you know, which ones? It's so maybe it's good. Don't it's make as much as. But yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> even when I was like handing my money over earlier, and it was like, "Who hand it to?" Like, "Oh, that's sales," and that's the cashier, or whatever it was. And yeah. I was like, "That's quite cool." But it's even like little. When I was trying to give them like little tips and stuff, I'd be interested to see how they get on the videos because they've been doing loads of posts, haven't they? Yes. And and hopefully they can do a few videos and just like explaining what they are and then putting it on social media and stuff because it's one thing putting a poster, but if you can see a cute kid. I, th- I think like that's that. with, with children, they seem to pick up things, IT things, a lot easier than adults. So a lot of the IT, I used to be quite comfortable with IT, but in the last sort of 10, 15 years, it's beyond some of it's beyond me but the children just pick it up instantly so so, you know the posters we're using a certain app for that they've been quite professionally done obviously they're going to be used next next week when we go to market and things but the video i think that's going to be more of a challenge but i I think they'll rise to it quite quite well yeah well you sent me that video didn't you the other day and that was really good that was literally 10 minutes max of right who's the one do what this is this is the story we'll keep it short um that's yeah, no, it got recorded and sent. It was yeah. Like, yeah. So, I mean, if you did that podcast style one way, you just get the two kids to sit down next to each other and say, right, these are the three questions, ask each other back and forth. That's like a minute long video. And you're talking about the products and showcasing the products, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and also like the one where you're doing the tip and the trick where it's saying, oh, this is our bookmark, this is why it's better than everyone else's and you can use it like that and it sticks out rather than doing whatever. Yeah, no, those are those good tips. And so I think they were really pleased to... To have you in, and you know, I think that hopefully we'll see the fruit of that next week when we when we do our videos. <laughs> hopefully, but yeah, it's it's just nice to see like young kids doing something like it's an extracurricular that isn't like sport and stuff. And when I got them to put their hands up at the end, like, oh, do you want to set up your own business and saying like, oh, I want to have a cake shop, I want to have a design shop, and it's nice that they've got their like aspirations, even if it's like what the mum or dad do. Yeah. There's, there's no reason why. They can't, you know yeah. what I mean? If yeah. that's what they want to do and that's what they're passionate about. Like one said they like like drawing and art and stuff. And it's just, yeah, if they... Yeah, we've got some fabulous artists, I must say. Because it's one of the... Because it's you and then the other teacher who helps out, is it? And yeah, Mrs. Is, yeah, Mrs. Mar- is the yeah. teacher assistant. She's, she seems good. She's, she's great at the art, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so she's... A great support. Mm-hmm. Um, and then who did you say sponsored it again? So it's o- Orion, uh, mm-hmm. the food that we, we get our school dinners from. So a member of their team, Polly, is so she's our main go-to. So she's being very hands-on, emailing every week. She comes in, she did interviews for the, with the children. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, no, as I said, she, you know, she's helped out with the local side of things and helping us sort of get a plan of where we're going to sell and things going forward. So it's been really good. Yeah. Because what, what, what do you think the main benefit is for the kids by doing this project? Or like, why do you want to do it again, apart from them just saying they've got extra space? You seem really passionate about it. No, I think it's, it's... Obviously, to learn the skills of business is important at any age, I think. I think if they mm-hmm. have that... Cause I think there's no, you, get, you see a lot, of, a lot of more younger people entering business nowadays. Mm-hmm. So that side of things is important. But I think just seeing that they're making a product 
which is then selling and making money. And it's not all about the money, but knowing that that money is going to be used for good, we're going to benefit people. So we've, we've, we're going to give all the profit to uh, Car Alley in Mind, uh, which is a local charity around mental health, and they help children and adults. Mm. So we thought that would be a, a good charity charity to, ch- to to use. And you know, it's not really about necessarily how much money we make, but knowing that what money we do make is going to benefit others. So it's more of a sort of a social enterprise. Uh, thing and you know we're, we're making products that we hope will help people with their worries or give them a bit of a smile when they're reading their book or, or whatever you know we invest in that money into buying more of those things and again yeah supporting our charity and after the eight weeks if we decide we quite like this you know there's no reason why we can't maybe continue that for a little bit longer and keep that business going it doesn't have to be the end of the the business just because the project's mm-hmm. over and carry on supporting maybe that charity, maybe other charities, lots of people uh, yeah, yeah. in the community, which is, I think that's nice for them to see. I think they feel good about themselves when they're, you know, having a difference. Yeah, making a difference, definitely. Because we spoke a little bit about mental health in there as well. How, how big is mental health in, in primary school, in your school, would you say? Because, like, me as an outsider, I just wouldn't even... Really think that kids that age would. But the only reason that I've probably recently acknowledged it a bit more is been doing a bit of work with like Cash for Kids, that charity, yeah. and like how disadvantaged some kids can be and go about and that kind of thing. But I think it's cool that like the kids are getting on board of it and actually aware of mental health yeah, issues. It's, it's, it's not something that was really talked about, certainly when I was at school and maybe Definitely even before, yeah. before COVID, it wasn't really high on the radar mm-hmm. but I think since COVID I think everyone's mental health has been affected by COVID and it was just noticeable how many children came back feeling anxious feeling worried feeling stressed and there's a real need for pastoral support there and mm-hmm. and it wasn't just the children it was the parents the teachers the teaching assistants me um, we've all had our ups and downs and which maybe struggled a little bit. So as a school, collectively, we try and do well-being days. We, we you know, if it's a trip out to, to anywhere, I said, I mentioned the beach before, we you know we mark children's mental health week, try and do sort of fun activities just to keep them, you know, focus on something else rather than maths and English and other sides of part, parts of the curriculum. So, so at the moment, it's, it's, it's huge. We've got a, we, we worked really hard on our mental health stuff from, uh, we got an award for well-being, so it's a well-being award for schools, it's called. We're trying to support other schools in setting up mental health clusters, or mental health groups in school. So we have a mental health lead at school. She leads the cluster and sort of support other schools in having mental health leads and supporting children in different ways that might, that might need it. So, uh, we've got staff training in ELSA, which is emotional literacy support, and children come in and talk if they want to right there thoughts and feelings they don't have to talk but it's their time with that adult they can draw they can play with a game if they want to talk they can talk if they don't that's absolutely fine but they've got that time out to really just feel calm again and that's you know forest school's been massive for us it's each class that goes every two weeks and that's been just their time to to chill we've got a gardening club we've got a garden the impact that has is you know children can feel really upset to go put them in the garden. They just calm. It's, it's, it's crazy how calming a garden is. So I feel, you know, it's it's so high, it's so important. And, and I think, you know, in secondary school, I can only imagine. I think those worries and fears probably, you know, could, they're not going to stop at primary. I think they're going to obviously going to continue. It's just sad that we've got little ones who feel like that. Cool. And you know, us as teachers or educationalists or whatever you want to call us, you know, we've got that passion to make sure that our children are are cared for and feel safe here. Mm -hmm. And they know that their mental well-being is is important to to us as it is to to them. It's a hard job and a lot of pressure, isn't it? Because you're literally teaching the next generation, isn't it? And like guiding them in the best way possible. Absolutely, because it's not just about teaching subjects. It's, you know, it's about the care of them, Mm -hmm. rounding them into, you know, Children have a lot of cope mm. in life in, when they leave, eventually leave school. Mm. Um, it's, it's hard, it's sad that 
that's where we're at with education. It's something needs to improve and giving mm. them more tests isn't the answer. No, it's like putting more pressure on them. Putting more pressure, pressure. yeah. So, it's, uh, yeah, I always hate tests though. Yeah. Like, I was never good at them. No. Actually, the only tests I was good at was maths. Apart from that, I was saying to my, my youngest, I said my mum used to help me with my homework at projects at home at secondary school. Mm -hmm. So I used to come up sort of top mm -hmm. three in the class in every, every subject. You could get glowing reports <laughs> up until the summer term where it was then you sat a test on your own. Like, and this is a guy. Who's, he's gone from, I've gone from third to like 29th in the yeah, class. Right, so right. I was like, mm, what's happening? Yeah, so I'll openly admit mine. So I didn't do a dissertation at uni. I did an enterprise project, it was like a business plan. Yeah. Because I thought this station is not for me, I'll do a business plan. But my dad helped me pretty much 95% of that because you just can't. Absolutely. And I was yeah. like, I'm literally, I don't know, just things with me, like every, everybody's different around me. I just say every kid's different. If I want to do something, I'll do it mm. to the best of my abilities and I'll yeah. try to be the best I possibly can. But if I'm not interested in it, I'll just, feel, I'll just, just like, I get by. So, yeah. Or it's, no, it's, it's the effort. Yeah. You know, mm. that, that was, mm. was focused. But yes. What would you say your greatest strength isn't your greatest weakness? Oh, no, we don't. Put you on the spot here. I, know. I think the greatest, well, in terms of school, I think the greatest strength is that you know, I generally care for all of the staff and all of the children at school. And I do my utmost, utmost to make sure that they feel safe and happy here. Happy, if, happy to come, if the staff are happy to come into work, that's going to obviously have an impact on the children. Right. And, you know, making sure that the children are safe and happy first and foremost. Uh, yeah. And obviously taught well as, at the same time but uh, I think I, I do that quite well mm. I would say yeah. and that's been right the right through I've always cared how well the children do and I, I enjoy seeing how they get on in later life as well it's not you know they don't just finish primary school I don't hear or see from them again sometimes I get to see mm. sort of what they've become so it's quite crazy when I've bumped into somebody in, in Carlisle one night they were celebrating their thirtieth. No way! It's like, where's that? I'm only forty-four. What's that? <laughs> so but that'll be that'll be the scary bit, though, yeah. I think. So just yeah, yeah, I think that's the strength of just that genuine care. Yeah, it's like you say, it's more than just the curriculum, isn't it? It's it other is. bits, yeah, like the mental health and the well-being and the extracurricular activities and the sports. I think mm -hmm. that you've highlighted things being important, which you don't have to do. You don't want to do, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, but you choose to do oh, exactly to yeah. help the kids. Yeah, yeah. And then a weakness. Well, if you saw my office, it would be filing. <laughs> I'm absolutely appalling. It's yeah. there's just. I know where everything is. It's I'm like that. Organised chaos. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. So if somebody else comes in and they're like, what's this look like? Like, if you ask me to find something, it's there, there, there. Yeah. But if you move something, I have no idea. Yeah. No. Well, that's, yeah. So just, they're all in nice plastic wallets, ready to file. So I've got a little pile of one side of the desk, <laughs> one on this side, some on the floor, some on a chair. But yeah, when I was at Silif with my desk, didn't really have to file a lot, but my desk was just covered in paper and one day a supply teacher came in and tidied it. Didn't know what that was. Nightmare. Yeah. I wasn't happy. I'm just, I'm just saying that. It took me three like, weeks to get over it. Just just leave it. Yeah. yeah just leave it. It's mine. It's mine. Yeah. It's my mess. <laughs> I know what everything is. It's fine. So, right, yeah, I think that's it. Very good ones. Yeah. So where can people buy these if they want to? Okay, so uh, we're hopefully going to have a, an open day for our parents to come in and see these and mm. uh, maybe have a smoothie as well. We've got a stall at Wigton Market. I'm good, I miss the smoothies now, you know. You might have to come back in for the smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a stall at Wigton Market next Friday. We've got a couple of pubs who are going to sell these for us over this weekend. I said a name. Yeah. Uh, so the Wellington, for everything, yeah. the Wellington pub in Great Orton and the Aikton Arms, uh, which is just down the road in, in Aikton. Mm. Um, thank you for that. Um, so, and then hopefully just word of mouth, word of mouth, really. We might have to do some sort of ordering system if people can get in touch with the school if they mm -hmm. see this online and fancy yeah. buying a bookmark from us or a, a worry doll. That'd be good. So it's majority of it's going to be local. Maybe get into some supermarkets and for stall and try and sell some as well. Did you say you post it on Facebook or? Yeah, we've got a Facebook page. Yeah, that's the only thing we've got. So we'll we'll put some stuff on. I have been putting some stuff on Facebook. Is that just um, we can be CV for our school or? We can be. Yeah, there is a we can be CV, but 
that's like an old one, and then it's a page connected to it, which is just Wig and B. So it's just a Wig and B one. So if you search for Wig and B, you should find it. Because uh, I think it's Facebook is such an underrated platform for like local communities. Mm. I think a lot of people disregard Facebook, but like you say, for something like this, I think it's powerful. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. there's people sharing it, like family members, mums, dads, and, and that kind of thing. So that'd be good, yeah. So yeah. I'll yeah, we'll get some pictures and then I'll post it and stuff. And then yeah, that'd, that'd, be, that'd, that'd, be, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm trying um, to get interest. Yeah, we're going to try and get on to CRFM as well at some point. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, because I know one of the ladies who seems to be involved with Tracy Boom, and she involved in something, I don't know. Because I'd like to do like a an hour on there. I don't yeah. know, just what they do. I said, no, I'd like to do a radio. Because I've got my own podcast. I'll just email them. Yeah, I know. I just, I'm just busy at the moment. <laughs> making excuses. I'm like, I don't actually quite like to do radio. Yeah. But... I think not like full time, but like guest appearance maybe now again. So I might have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely got there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think trying to us. But yeah, everybody, like watch right, on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment your favorite part. If you listen on Spotify, Apple, make sure to follow the podcast and leave a five star review. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you.